I remember back in 1984, the Olympics had come to town, and I was so excited that the Olympics were there. I was a runner, and I loved to run, and I was actually a very gifted runner. So I remember I did my homework, and I found out when the Olympic torch was going to be coming through my, my neighborhood. I, I lived in South Central. So I remember early, it was early, it was maybe 8 o'clock that morning, the torch bearer came down Central Avenue. And I just remember the exhilaration that I felt. I just, I just said, oh, I wonder what that's like. I'm a runner, and just the pinnacle of academic achievement for me would be to carry the torch. Big dream, though. So, big dream. I let that go. <laughs> that's okay, though. But I did let it go, honestly. A year before our lives changed so drastically, my wife and I were watching, I believe it was something on television, and we saw this silent march. And in this silent march, there were these people marching because loved ones had been lost to gun violence. And they were, and they were symbolizing that the violence needed to stop and we're taking a stand in unity. We're unifying with one another. The next year, as you can see, I was in that same march because our son's life had been taken. And it was a horrific thing, but again, what do you do? You live. We went through, it was hard, it was difficult. We were angry, we were enraged, but we took that and with the help of God, we were able to channel it back into something very, very wonderful. There are a number of things that have transpired since this happened. A number of intense things have happened. But you know, we keep our focus on what we are supposed to in this life. And part of our thing is, touching the lives of others. Our son, Evan, the seven-year-old, lost his life to gun violence. It was a terrible thing. But he had his campaign speech in his, in his little history class um, a couple weeks before his life was taken. And he said, I would, if I were president, I would talk to those who cause harm to, to others, and I would tell them to go to church. And that was part of our motivation for reaching out and going into the youth correctional facilities and seeking to instill life in, in lifeless situations. You know, my, my other son, Alec, his life was impacted as well. You know, he sustained eye injuries. He had to have a cornea buttonhole transplant in his eye. He had to have several surgeries. It was a very horrific thing to make funeral plans, but also try to sustain my other son and to make sure his sight was still there. It was, a, it was a horrible time. It was a difficult time. It was a challenging time of life. But we took those situations and we became, we became empowered by the purpose that came up in us. And that's one thing that tragedy can happen. And sometimes when tragedies happen, you can make difficult or you can make bad decisions. But we rose. We rose to the occasion and allowed the Lord to lead us in this thing. So we started going into the youth correctional facilities. We went into the camps. And we have just poured our life and the love into individuals. The one award here, the Changing Lives Award, was an award that we received. And this, to, to my wife and I, to our credit, this is the most important award that we could ever have received. And it's important because this was voted upon by incarcerated young men. They had to determine over the years that they've been incarcerated who were the people that maybe impacted their lives the most in a, in a positive, influential way. And over a period of years, we had no idea we were there to hear this, and we were thinking, oh, this is going to be a great honor for someone. And they called my wife and my name. And that just meant so much to us because the work that we were doing was making an impact in the lives of the young men that were in the facilities. In closing, I shared with you in the very beginning that I stood out on the street in, in South Central Los Angeles, and I wondered what it would be like to carry the torch. And basically, through the work that my wife and I have been able to do over the years, we were recognized when the Olympics came through Los Angeles for Salt Lake City in 2002, I had the privilege of carrying the Olympic torch. And what I would say to that is we all have a torch to carry. We all have a purpose in life. And hold that torch high and run hard with sincere intention. Thank you. Thank you.